Today's video is about Hanabi glass. Along with glass art, objects, and other things, Hanabi glass also makes glass dip pens. I'll show clips how this particular glass pen here is made. And stay tuned because at the end of the video, I'll give instructions on how you can win it in a giveaway. Japan is pretty much well ground zero when it comes to glass dip pens. There is a whole culture of using beautiful glass dip pens with various fountain pen inks called Inkunuma. I'll link in the upper right hand corner a video that explains this a little more thoroughly. There are other countries that may have a longer history of making glass dip pens, but for the modern glass dip pen, Japan is the place. And Hanabi Glass is a bit of a unicorn in that you have an American working in Japan using a lot of the aesthetics that come with glass dip pens, but yet has his own unique style. The artist behind Hanabi Glass is Lucas Mahoney. Here he is in his workshop, which we'll explore later. Why you want to know about Hanabi Glass is that A, he speaks English, so you'll be able to communicate what you want with him. B, he ships internationally, which means now you have access to beautiful Japanese glass pens, which are very hard to get outside of Japan. And see, Lucas is a big innovator and he makes unusual glass dip pens along with he's one of the few people that makes italic glass nibs and something called an artist nib. Here's one of my Hanabi glass italic nibs and you can order them within a specified size range. Here are two nibs at his workshop. The one on the left is a normal glass dip pen nib and the one on the right is the artist nib. Let me show you a still. If you look at the tip of the artist nib on the right you can see that it's slanted. If you write on the pointed side you have a very thin line. Then if you rotate the pen to where you get to the wider side you have a very thick line and you can kind of vary between those two. I've never seen one of those and I don't have one but I will link up to a video where he writes with it. And this was at his workshop, a kind of offset nibbed calligraphy pen. The Hanabi Glass Studio is on the outskirts of Yokohama about one hour away from Tokyo. Because of zoning laws this area is just beautiful. Building is controlled and a lot of the land is dedicated to small farmers. There are huge stands of bamboo trees. On the walk from the train station to his studio we passed a small vegetable stand that was paid by honor. There are several parks in the area and this is the meeting room slash community area for one of the parks. And much of the walk to his house was along the stream. Much of their population is elderly and this is what they would consider a traffic jam. It's a thoroughly delightful area. There are two artists that Lucas talked about as kind of influencing the whole glass art scene. One is Dale Chihuly. He is known for blown glass or soft glass and moving it into the field of large-scale sculpture like this beautiful piece here. And then there's the godfather of glass, Bob Snodgrass. He's known for his contributions to glass art, pipe making, and is the founder of the Eugene Glass School, which trained many famous glass blowers. He's also credited with discovering that borosilicate glass can be fumed or mixed with gold or silver to create colors. Here he is working in his van and this picture just kills me. It reminds me so much of my youth. Hi, I'm Lucas. I've been uh, blowing glass for about 22 years now. Started back in the United States. I eventually moved to Japan where I've worked with mm, most of the borosilicate glass blowers here. Um, I got into making pens about three years ago now. 
for the majority of my time in Japan, I've made pendants, glasses, various other things. Uh, you can stop at my website, which is hanabi-glass.com, which will probably be linked in the video, where I have some pendants available. I do a little bit of custom work here and there. Yeah, it's a very fun job. I can't imagine doing anything else. Let's go into my studio and check it out. Lucas's studio is quite spacious considering land is so expensive in Japan. Inside of his studio is his workbench and you can see that large fan there that helps keep the metal fumes out of the studio. In the far corner there, that big blue thing, is his kiln. After he finishes a pen, he puts it in the kiln at 1050 degrees Fahrenheit or 565 degrees Celsius for one hour to anneal it. It kind of crystallizes it and makes it stronger. Lucas works with borosilicate glass and in his studio are just rods of it lined up everywhere. Borosilicate glass as opposed to soft glass is worked at a higher temperature. And it is also more resistant to temperature changes, so when Lucas is working the glass, he can set it down without having to worry about it, like breaking. But the most interesting thing I saw in the making of the pen is fuming, and that's when they heat up silver or gold or a metal to color the glass. This can't be done with soft glass. Here's some beautiful swirls in this globe, and it can only be done with borosilicate glass and fuming silver and gold. Also in his studio are other objects that he makes, like here's a Christmas ornament. Here's a small glass bottle with a beautiful lid and a pendant. And of course, there's glass pens in various stages of completion all over the studio. Yeah, and I managed to snag this last one here. One of the things that Lucas pointed out to me was this fumed borosilicate glass makes these pretty colors, and you can see it against the light background like this piece of selenite here. But put it up against a dark background like this piece of obsidian and the colors just really change. It makes for an interesting and beautiful pen. Okay, Lucas is going to make the pen. He extinguished the flame and then cleaned off the excess carbon. He relit the torch and I don't know, but there's something about Zippos that hey, he says you got to use a Zippo, <laughs> not a Bic. He uses a mixture of propane and oxygen. Here's the compressor for the oxygen and the controller and concentrators for the oxygen. Here he's heating up the glass rod and blowing into it to make the bubble bigger and to keep the sides uniform. Lucas looks pretty bad wearing the didymium eyewear to protect you from the yellow sodium flare of the flame. I also wore the uh, protective eyewear but didn't look as cool. But I did have a didymium filter for my camera so I could see inside the flame. After he gets it the size he wants, he takes a very little bit of 24 karat gold and fumes it over the glass. And remember, fuming is just kind of heating up that gold so it makes like a vapor that goes inside of the glass to make it colored. This is just kind of a base for the rest of the fuming. Then he warms the glass back up. You have to work at higher temperatures for borosilicate glass and uses fine silver, which is 99.99% silver, and fumes the silver onto the glass. Then he traps that silver fumed part with clear dots, so he's using a clear glass rod and melting dots on there, which will later trap the silver into the glass. And now he's melting that clear glass smooth and continuing to blow into the glass to keep it the same size or just a little bit bigger. This is where we're at now with just the silver. And now he's fuming 24 karat gold, not the base, but the actual 20, a heavy coating of 24 karat gold. 
Since the gold has a little bit of a problem sticking, he adds sodium to it. It kind of looks like a lightsaber. And this is silver and gold fumed glass. And then clear dots across the dots again to trap the gold. He said you can do lines or whatever else, but apparently he, he prefers dots. He's going to superheat this up and eventually get what's called implosion where it's going to collapse back down onto itself. The crackling sound you hear in the background is the oxygen burning. And he's heating it up so that the clear glass melts around it. And here you can see it's gotten a little bit smaller and is developing its pattern. He attached another glass rod to it and is now stretching it out to the shape that he wants. Now he's melting on the black glass that's attached to the handle. Now he's switched to a smaller torch since he'll be working with the nib. He's pulling off a piece of what he calls the nib cane to make a nib. Lucas makes all of his own nibs. He doesn't attach pre-made nibs. And he makes these nib canes by using a 20 millimeter rod blank and then layering on grooves with a four millimeter rod of glass. I'll link a video of his if you wanna see how he makes the nib cane. He works the nib in the flame to give it a little bit of a twist. Attaches the black glass that is the base of the nib. Works the blue glass that's part of the section. And then attaches that blue glass that he worked as a section onto the handle that he made earlier. And the handle in the section is taking shape and then attaches the nib with its black base onto the handle. He works all that in the torch for a while and this is the finished pen out of the fire. Then using a little bit of water, he sands down the nib going all the way up to 6,000 grit and holding the nib inside of a sonic cleaner between nib grits. He has a video on that and I'll link it up because it's useful too if you just want to like learn how to um, sand down maybe a chipped glass pen you already own. Then the pen goes back into the flame to detach the rod that was on the end of the handle and then fire polishes the end of it. One of the advantages to having Lucas make his own nibs is that he makes the grooves very deep and that allows it to hold a lot of ink. So you only have to dip the nib in about halfway. The shape or design of the nib does not factor in into how much ink the pen can hold. It all comes down to how deep the grooves are and the restriction of the ink as you get toward the tip. So that's the advantage of having someone like Lucas make the glass pen is because A, you get a beautiful product, but you also get a product that works very well. That's why I was so excited to be able to interview Lucas and to do this video. He very kindly offered this pen up for a giveaway. So all you need to do to enter is follow his Instagram, which I'll put in the show notes, my Instagram, and put any kind of comment you want underneath the picture of this pen. I'll announce the winner on my next full length video. And if you got anything out of this video, I'd appreciate a like, subscribe, or share. Thanks.